they do. Flix Anonymous. I don't know. It's just awesome. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man, man. Human beings were not meant to sit in little cubicles staring at computer screens all day. Plan B is, is just to keep on giving her. Like, you, you work hard. That's what's that, that a plan? Yeah, that's a plan right there. The guy opens his door and gets shot. You think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. knocks. The 44 Magnum, 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and you blow your head clean off. You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, Bunk? Hello, everybody, and welcome to Flix Anonymous, episode 23 on CannabisInCanada.ca, TheLeagueOfManChildren.com, and VanCityBuzz.com. I'm Steve Stebbing. Sitting to my left is my buddy Trev Duick. That's me. Hey, how are you doing, buddy? I'm great. Yes. I'm really good. It was nice to be able to go to a movie tonight that we both enjoyed. Oh, immensely. Yeah, we'll talk yeah. about that later, Definitely. obviously, but you kind of come in to these shows after you see a really great film, and you're kind of like energized, like yes. Buzzing, yeah. Definitely yeah. buzz, yeah. yeah. Um, but this is our second uh, uh, video episode, sorry, this is our third, third. video episode. Uh, last week was our second, and uh, I just wanted <laughs> to thank everybody at CannabisInCanada.ca, everyone that runs it, for giving us the platform and giving us a home. Uh, we know that this isn't the regular content that people who subscribe to this account is, is usually used to, but we thought we'd bring something fun, some movies. Uh, we're two stoners that love movies. Big time. And uh, we just really wanted to, to bring something we love, and uh, we got the opportunity to do it. So uh, yeah. we're very happy about that. Some people aren't. Stoked. Got a little bit of, uh, got a little, some comments. But, yeah. You know, that's expected, right? I yeah. Mean, people just sometimes change. People don't like change. But you know what I always say is, you know what, cannabis, the cannabis culture um, is about including everything. It's about arts. And, you know, we're talking about film, mm -hmm. uh, right? So um, it's about a lot of things. It encompasses a lot of stuff. And yeah. uh, so I think it's great that we can bring this kind of content that's, you know, uh, we can show, you know, we can talk politics and we can talk, you know, um, I don't really want to talk. Legalization <laughs> yeah. of marijuana. And that's all great yeah. and has a place for it. But sometimes mm -hmm. you just want to sit back, smoke a joint, and talk movies, man. Exactly. Uh, we're not hurting anybody, and we're no. not hijacking anything. So well, The interesting comment, though, <laughs> was that somebody said, oh, those guys don't smoke weed. I thought that was hilarious. That I, is very... I just want to let everybody know. Now, we have marijuana joints right here, rolled, ready to go. Now, the reason, the reason is, is we don't like to smoke marijuana because we're you know doing a video cast or podcast mm -hmm. i find that when i'm stoned i'm terrible at mm -hmm. even communicating yeah this like, is my line of, of of attention right here and this is what you get i shouldn't say i'm bad at communicating but we'd go <laughs> off on tangents quite a bit mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's not like we don't do that enough no, but exactly like right now yeah but, uh, super tangent yeah but uh <laughs> we do smoke weed yeah trust me we yeah. we have a thing called stoner picks it, it's you not know. just it's not just for the kitsch of it all. Mm -hmm. But we, but we don't need to smoke weed on camera. No, 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 no not at all. Not, not at to all. Prove anything. So we've got a bunch of movies today, a bunch of new releases today, and I, I, there's a few of these in here that I personally could watch over and over again. They're like new. They're like new favorites to me already. Yeah. Um, and we'll get to those ones. We got to start with the the big movie of the week. Unfortunately, it's probably the the biggest budget movie. It's done by a big studio, Universal. It's the new Melissa McCarthy movie. It's called Ooh. The Boss. Here you go. Ah, a bed inside a sofa. That's neat. Well, it's old, but it's comfortable, so. Thank you, Claire. Good night, Michelle. This is so bad. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay, if you have a bed like that, it's fucking broken. 
Yeah. All right. It's, yeah, it's you might want to get that checked out. Jesus. <laughs> now, I'm going to say this. I like Melissa McCarthy, but not in shit like this. No. Like, I honestly don't like her in shit like this. She's better than this. And the fact that she wrote this with her husband, Ben Falcone, who directs mm -hmm. it as well, uh, re-teaming again after Tammy, another movie that just didn't go very well. It just... It, it reinforces a stereotype that she's not funny and all her humor is from falling down, which it, it, it isn't. Spy was a fun movie. This movie's got Kristen Bell utterly wasted, it looks like. We didn't mm. get to see this one, but the embargo has been lifted for this one. And uh, what's the Rotten Tomatoes on this one? It is a whopping 10%. Ouch! Ow! That's like a bad Brazilian wax for Melissa yeah. McCarthy. Oh, Jesus. You bet, though, she's hit and miss for me. Yeah. I'm not a huge, I, I, I don't know. Some stuff she's really great in. And then, like you said, there's been some things that just are terrible. Absolutely. Like Adam Sandler, terrible. Yeah. And so we just, we just yeah. don't go there. So we'll just wash that one away. Yeah. So let's move on. Uh, hardcore Henry. Hardcore. We, we gave away some tickets for this one. Uh, we also, me and Trevor did a spot on the Toddcast podcast you can check out for this one that we did as well. Mm -hmm. This movie is so much fun. Here's a look at it right here. It's all right. I'm not here to hurt you. Is your speech module installed? Shit. I feel like it's me. <laughs> well, at least that's, we know that's you're not the, dead. That's the yeah. gist of it. Oh. It's all right. So you can put your hands down now. Three years I've been waiting for this moment. I'll get Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at you. Open the glove box, please. Take out that whole contraption. You've got to untangle the wires. It's a big time video game. Yeah, Open exactly. Up, yeah. Check yeah, this out, close. though. Plug the jacks in there. Yeah, in there. Do you have something about. So. Your name's Henry. Doesn't that and... just kind of bother you inside? Okay, well, the good news yeah. is that you're going to live a while. The bad news is that in this case, a while means 20, 30 minutes tops, Henry. Unless you're very, very lucky. There's some clothes in there. Put the hoodie on. There's not enough time. I can just cover the blood up with your back. Just stay calm. And I'm here, man. Let's hear Капитан Березкин, вас что поменьше, пожалуйста. Я готов понести наказание. Wow. This film is awesome. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. It is just a roller coaster, non-stop, blood, brains, octane, just firing on all cylinders at every point in this movie. It really is hardcore. Um, it comes from director, uh, a Russian director. This is his first feature. His name's Ilya Neischuller. Uh, he is in a rock, an indie rock band in Russia called Biting Elbows. And all his music videos are all these first person style uh, action sequences. And they're really, really, really well done. Like, yeah. He's, he's, he's at the top of his game, even just on YouTube. I remember seeing that short and it was yeah. being passed around and how amazing people thought it was. And now doing a feature film, it mm -hmm. looks great. I mean, it's, it's funny, we was reading a review online and someone said, well, I don't know, it didn't have a, it didn't have a really good story. I'm like, <laughs> what movie like look, that looks like that should have like a fantastic story because it's nonstop action. It's, yeah. it's for that video game generation. That's exactly it's, it's, it. It's for the people who like the first, you know, uh, first person shooters. And uh, so they'll go to a movie like this. It's full of, you know, just full on action all the time, nonstop, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, you know what you're getting when you go in, right? Yeah, so. exactly. And as you saw in that clip, uh, one of the other uh, lead actors in it is uh, Charlotte Copley, who people may know from uh, District 9, uh, A-Team, uh, Elysium, a few other films. Uh, he's awesome. I absolutely love this guy because he just seems to conquer all these act, uh, these uh, genre films. And I just, mm -hmm. I really dig this about him. He, he's just one of my favorites. And uh, this movie is just nonstop crazy, and I, I loved it for exactly that reason. Uh, it's trending, last time I looked at Rotten Tomatoes, at 81%. The meta is not as good, it's 58%. So pe the script is really affecting people's thoughts on this movie, apparently. Yeah, it's, it's, some people really like it, and some people are like, eh. Uh, it was, you know? 
it, it, it was thrill ride cinema for me. So I give it a four and a half just because it's, it's one of those movies where you sit down, you grip your seat and you just immerse yourself right in it because you are hardcore Henry. Yeah, I, didn't get, I haven't had a chance to check it out yet, but it's mm -hmm. definitely on my list. It, there's just been other things going on, but uh, I'll definitely, I want to see it on the big screen. It's probably, yeah. probably way better to That's see the most on a effective. large screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. This is the one that we just got back from. Trevor said that we're on a, a, a high because mm. uh, we saw a great movie. And uh, this is Richard Linklater's spiritual sequel to Dazed and Confused. This is Everybody Wants Some. <laughs> Me, the group, and my friends are gonna try to move your feet. See, I am one to Finn, and I'd like to say hello. Say hello, Finn. To the black, to the white, the red, and the brown, the purple, and yellow. My first I got a bang, bang. A boogie to the boogie, say don't jump the boogie to the bang, bang, boogie. Let's rock. You don't stop. Rock the rhythm that'll make your body rock. Now, so far, you've heard my voice, but I brought two friends along. Who are they? And next on the mic is my man, Rogue. Come on, Rogue, yeah. sing that song. Check it out. I'm a C-A-S and the O-V-A and the rest. Really, of really well done. Uh, see, I go by the code of the doctor of the mix, and these reasons I'll tell you why. You see, I'm six foot so much fun to do this scene. That was good. You see, I got more clothes than Muhammad Ali, and I dress so viciously. I got bodyguards, I got two big cars, and it definitely ain't the way. Tell me, Dale. I got a Lincoln Continental and a sunroof Cadillac. I love this movie. I, I just adore this movie. Um, it, it's going. It's featuring a lot of actors that uh, you're kind of your layman to the movie is not going to recognize recognize at all. No. Uh, they all have bright futures ahead of them. Uh, we're talking Blake Jenner, who plays our main character, uh, Tyler Hoechlin, uh, who is also seen in the, the TV series Teen Wolf, uh, Ryan Guzman, who was in The Boy Next Door with J Lo last year, right. uh, Wyatt Russell, who is the spitting image of his father, Kurt Russell. It's insane, like he is a haircut away from remaking the thing, it's insane. <laughs> uh, Glenn Powell, who steals the movie as a yeah. character named Finnegan, and uh, Zoe Dutch, uh, one, just kind of the main girl of attraction in this movie, is also really good. And Richard Linklater nails this movie. This movie is so well done. Yeah, it's great, it's what you, went, it's what you wanted to expect, you know, mm -hmm. what you expected, right? Um, Remember Dazed and Confused when you first saw that? Yeah. There wasn't a lot of actors in that movie that people recognized, but they ended up, some of them ended up becoming household names. Some one of them didn't. was Batman. Yeah, one of them was just recently Batman, Ben Affleck. <laughs> um, you know, Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. This is going to do the same thing for some of those actors as well. I thought there were some great performances. But what I really liked was how the story transitioned to different musical genres. Yeah. Because really, the, the other star beside the actors is the music. Yeah, definitely. And just like Days and Confused, there was some great music. Just like in this movie where it's, you know, early 80s, there's some fantastic music, right? Yeah. And uh, they went from disco to, you know, punk and all kinds of things. It's, it's very well done. I think the soundtrack's going to do very, very well. Yeah, definitely. And one thing, I'm just going to give you two words that you're going to look out for this movie, and you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about as soon as, like, if you've seen this movie, as soon as I say it, Raw Dog. Raw dog. Raw dog. Trust me, he steals the film. He's yeah. he's hilarious. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just some great character acting in this, in yeah. this film. Everybody is 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 hitting just like everything so well in this movie, and and the cohesiveness of everybody it just works. And you and I were talking about there's some scenes where they're smoking smoking weed. Yeah, and it's actually it looks like real weed because yeah. sometimes in films they they don't use real. It looks weed like shake or, or just like, like just crap. Yeah, you know it's just it's some really nice bud. So yeah, there there's you go. actual full shots of buds. Maybe yeah, it nice looks like looking a, buds. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a kind of an indica. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to. I was trying to. I was looking at Trevor. Yeah. Like, are you grading this I'm as just we're doing to see, this? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was very well done. Yeah, um, I'm. This is one of my favorite movies of this year so far. Uh, I definitely felt amazing coming out of this movie. I'm gonna go for the full five. Yeah, it's a fun film. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you leave going, yeah, it was awesome. There's a there's actually a scene in the middle of the credits that you need to watch as yeah. well. It's kind of you can tell these actors had a lot of fun on set. Yeah, you definitely. know, and uh, produced uh, what's going to be probably another you know cult hit classic. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah, I, I'm going to give this one a, a five out of five. I, it's one of those films you just enjoy, especially yeah. if you grew up in that era. And you don't even have to grow up in that era to enjoy it. But yeah. if you really if you grew up in the '80s. 
if you're an 80s kid, um, late 70s, you'll really enjoy uh, this film. Yeah. Uh, and like Hen Hardcore Henry, I could watch it again as soon as the movie's over. I could just pop it on again and watch it again because I feel like there's other stuff, like there's so much layers to it that I can find. How many yeah. times in uh, in the in Everybody Wants Some, how many times did you go, oh yeah, remember that? Yeah. Or, remember that? Oh, remember that? Or, oh, I love that song. Like, yeah. They you know, played was... They played Urgent by Foreigner, which is like a childhood favorite of mine. But so. remember the little baseball game you could yeah. play with the little lights and they were playing? I was like, oh my God, it was like nostalgia flashbacks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was great. Um, it's a 91% certified on Rotten Tomatoes right now and the meta score is 85 and it's already been released in the States for a couple of weeks now. So yeah. we've got our final score on that one. So it's doing well. All right, um, but unfortunately, uh, that was supposed to be a, a full, a, a wide release, but it is in Vancouver. It is only playing at the International Village, but it is well worth your time to go see that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, it's a good for time. sure. All right, uh, our next film uh, comes from a French Canadian director named Jean Marc Vallee, who is probably most known in American cinema for make, for directing the Dallas Buyers Club, which won Matthew McConaughey Academy Award and Jared Leto won. Uh, he is now has a new film starring Jake Gyllenhaal and Naomi Watts, and it's called Demolition. Here's a clip right here. What's the movie with Jake Gyllenhaal? He's so good. Isn't he? He's like, so good. He need, he's going to be an Academy Award winner soon. Nightcrawler, he was robbed for Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler was really good. so good. The fact that Bradley Cooper got a nomination and he didn't still bugs me. Because, what, say what you will about American Sniper, not close to Nightcrawler. Do you have an appointment? No, Marty, I'm just swinging through. I'm Mr. Mitchell. <laughs> I just love Jake Gyllenhaal. Like, I, I really do. And it's not like I have a crush on Jake Gyllenhaal. You know, He's just crush. good. Yeah, well, well it's you okay know, it's, it's man fair. Crushes. It's fair. I'm yeah, okay with man it's crushes. Fair. Um, but the movie, that movie doesn't really, that clip doesn't really give you a sense of what the movie is about. Um, mm -mm. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal plays a, a uh, New York stockbroker who is in a car accident on the way to work with his wife, and his wife is killed in the car accident. And in, instead of going right into the grieving process, he starts to realize that he didn't really know his wife all that well. Mm. And she seemed like a, a convenient marriage and, and like almost like a stranger. So mm. instead of grieving, he feels kind of numb. Right. So he starts to try to break his life, life down to nothing to figure out where he's going to go from here. And quite literally. Yeah, why, why the movie's called Demolition. It's very metaphorical, and I think that is what is crushing this movie in, in critics' eyes. Yeah, it's, it's getting mixed reviews. It's got um, a 53 Rotten Tomato and a 50 Meta score, and I am baffled by the whole thing. Some of the critics, like you said, didn't like the whole metaphor and, you know... Psychology 101, Psychology 101 of, you know, tearing it all up and building it back again, and all that stuff um yeah it looks it looks crazy uh, he plays a crazy guy essentially yeah. he just goes off the deep end yeah um kind of a midlife crisis but like tr a triggered crisis yeah yeah it looks very interesting and like you said i like jake and uh you know i think he puts on some pretty solid work over yeah. the years and so yeah i'll check it out it's, i think it's worth checking out for his performance probably I'm definitely yeah. and uh <laughs> also his chemistry with co-star naomi watts who I really love Naomi right, Watts. Right, yeah, I love so, Naomi Watts. And they have a child actor. Uh, uh, there's a character played by Judah Lewis. Um, and child actors are very, it's very hit or miss. Mm. They're either r really excel or they just serve nothing but to piss you off. We saw a great child actor in Midnight Special. That's week. exactly yeah. it. Yeah. And, and I saw my screening of Demolition right before Midnight Special. Perfect. So that was a great day because we had two great child actors mm -hmm. uh, back to back. And Judah Lewis has a definite future ahead of them. Yeah. Um, 
I'm I'm settling. I, I'm on a four point a four point five out of five on this wow, one. Wow, you really really like. I it. really dug this one. That's why I'm so baffled by why the critics are not. I think really it's going to be this. one of those movies. Some people are going to really like it, like you did, and well, it's like the bronze. Just, like the what? Like the bronze. Like the bronze. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, how I really liked it, and the critics, other critics just did not like it. Um, this one is playing in more theaters than everybody wants some. This one is going to be wow. playing in Sil at Silver City Coquitlam, uh, Colossus Langley, uh, North Van, the International Village, and the Fifth Avenue Theater. So there are a few places for you to check it, check it out, and some places in the burbs you can check it out too. So mm -hmm. that's very good. I hope people go and check out Demolition because it is a well put together film and a return for uh, Mark uh, Jean Marc Vallée, uh, who did a brilliant film years ago called Crazy that I absolutely am in love with still to this day. So uh, let's. Uh, and, and you're in love with Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, I love him. Mm -hmm. He laughs when he eats sandwiches in memes, so you gotta like him a little bit, I guess. <laughs> what? Sandwich, you hilarious! Okay, um, so let's head in some shit now. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, this <laughs> film was the film that closed out the Vancouver International Film Festival last year. I was really, really excited for it because it's a music biopic of a, a really respectable musician. Uh, the film is called I Saw the Light, starring Tom Hiddleston. Here's a look here. How you doing up there, cowboy? Can I get this way? Just can't believe this place is yours. For about another hour, I was going to build a house over by that pecan grove, but, uh, that didn't happen now. Well, you'll get another one somewhere else. <laughs> somewhere else. I've been there before. Yeah, it ain't much better. I can't believe well, Sometimes I wish man. I was right. I know he normally has the you know the British accent. So. And that's the best thing about the movie is Tom Hiddleston is doing his damnedest to make this film work. He's singing all his own songs, he's wow. playing the guitar. Like he is just really good in this movie. The rest of the movie is not good. There's no other good performances. The writing is terrible. Ooh. This is a this is the second film from a, a producer turned director. His name is Mark Abrahams. He wrote the film as well. He directed a Greg Kinnear movie a few years back called Flash of Genius. I don't know if you heard of that one. It was about the inventor of the the uh, windshield wiper. No. Um, but what? Yeah, about the inventor of the windshield wiper called Flash of Genius. Some people might remember this one. Hmm. Um, I Saw the Light is just a failure on all levels. Oh. It, it, it is not the film, it's the film about Hank Williams. I don't know if I, I said that. I no, probably didn't, should have said that. But it's about Hank Williams. It's about Hank Williams, uh, an amazing musician who mm -hmm. had a very short career, but a very powerful impact of a career. And they never, they, he has, I mean, he has famous kids. I mean, Hank Williams II yep. Yep. and everything. And they Junior. never met, they have the kids on screen, they never ad address them by name. Everything is so fleeting. It, mm. This movie is just a bumbling mess That's of a film. Bad. And I was so disappointed to close out the film festival with this one. Uh, people agree with me. Rotten Tomatoes, 15%. You're 5% above the boss? Really? Ugh, on a biopic. That's bad. Uh, the Metascore is 46, so they're being nicer. Still, I'm not being nice in this movie. This movie is a 1 out of 5. It was terrible. Okay. Absolutely terrible. Uh, so let's uh, move to a foreign film from Argentina. Uh, this one's definitely a hard-hitting, maybe a slightly controversial one, oh. uh, and it's called El Clan, or The Clan. Here's a look. So if you're listening to this, you won't understand a goddamn word. No, no. Whoa. Well, do you wanna, maybe we'll do, wanna, do it. You yeah. want to talk along? Okay. You'll be first guy, I'll be second guy. Okay. Okay, we'll do this. All right. We'll Hopefully do this. We got you. We got you. So far, they're only listeners. driving right now. Yes. Oh, he's going to pick somebody up. Oh, okay. He's going to pick there someone up. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'll be the go. guy on the right. Okay. Hey, dude, can't believe I bumped into you. What are you doing here? Oh, wait, that's you. I ran out of gas. My car is 10 blocks away. Can you give me a ride? Sure, hop in. <laughs> dude. Thanks. Oh, Good news, this doesn't happen only to me. A couple of weeks ago, after you left the party with the twins, the Scandinavian girl shows up. Make a left here. Or Danish, I don't know. They were really tall. So I was driving them to my dad's boat. I'm using it while I work for him. 
So far, so good. This way? Turn left here. They wanted to sail and were ready to party on the boat. When I ran out of gas! <laughs> Does he have a gun? Oh, he's getting jacked. Oh, he's totally getting robbed. Oh. Yeah, now it's just a bumbling mess of them getting jacked and kidnapped. It's called the clan. Yeah, this is called the clan. It's a true story. Uh -oh. That's a bad day. Yeah, no, you're not doing good. One of them just got thrown into the front seat, right? Yeah, there are ones in the trunk and ones in the seat. But here's the twist, and here's the kicker. He was in on it. Totally. Oh, yeah. that bastard. He was in on it. Yeah. So ask him, are you okay? Oh, Alex. Alex. Sí, estoy bien, papá. He says he's okay. I'm okay, Dad. <laughs> this is a long trailer. It, it is. It is. It's a little. It's a little bit of a long one. Looks cool, though. It does. It does. Um, it's based on the tr a true story of a family that would kid uh, kidnap uh, people for ransom, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, murdered a lot of people. Uh, but they were a fairly prominent family as well. So this was uh, definitely very shady. It's something probably used to uh, to uh, bolster money. bolster up their finances behind the scenes type thing. Mm -hmm. Their son, uh, th there in that clip that uh, that kind of gets Buddy kidnapped essentially. Right. He's also kind of a soccer star as well and everything. Oh. So they did this throughout the eighties. Mm -hmm. uh, they were they were just extorting people for money, ransom, all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I had a, I have a link to this one, um, but it, it kind of was giving me the gears for a bit. So I only saw the first little bit. It is an intense film, and it's definitely going to push some people's buttons because um, it doesn't attack them like that they're they're villainous people. Oh, so far. it's so, really more. It kind of glorifies the whole thing. Maybe or or just a humanizing. Okay. I think it's a humanizing one, so it might rub people the wrong way. Uh, I saw an article, uh, an article by critic A. O. Scott, who is one of the best critics out there, mm -hmm. and he said he didn't like the film the first time he watched it, but when he watched it again, he really started to dig this film. So mm. I think people are going to want to check out this film. Um, it's called The Clan. It's called The Clan, and you're going to be able to see it at the International Village. I also want to say that I saw the lights playing at Fifth Avenue, if you want to check that one out. But The Clan looks interesting. People are liking it. The Rotten Tomatoes is 90% on it. The Metascore is 72, so... There you go. Not too badly. Um, our last film of today... Oh, good. Had, this, is a, this is a long show. It is a long show, but doing it fantastic you're doing a fantastic job it. you're handling it very well <laughs> thank you sir thank you I you're very saying, good for just, my ego it's just a very busy very we have a lot it of is. films to talk about it is yeah um the last one today is a canadian film um it's called across the line and it's directed by a guy named director x yeah uh, i'll explain a little bit more about it but it stars stephen james who was seen earlier this year playing jesse owens in race here's a look at it right at uh, the trailer right here You gotta keep your nose clean. You gotta be the guy in the Wheaties box. You know what I mean? It's pretty sweet for a pimp car. Get it. <laughs> People are watching you. You forget how to walk? Monkey, she don't want you. What the f you wanna do something? Yeah, monkey. Yeah, come on, come on. Hey, hey, hey. Monkey, you guys think you can take whatever you want? This is the film in the same province that the trailer part was. This is Nova Scotia. Be in the show. Oh, that's your dream, right? You never Things been. Things are happening for you. Don't get caught up in your brother's shit. You ever been in Nova Scotia? No, I've never been in Nova Scotia. You think your dad's a cop? It was like a pecan, pecan Subban biopic or something. Right? That's exactly what I was thinking. I think it's great though. What a great idea for a film. What do you want from me, Daddy? He just needs two brothers with him to be the P.K. Subban story, right? Yeah. He's Malcolm right. and Jordan. Everything. Fucking sports now. I worked twice as hard. <laughs> I was twice as good. I did 200%. And still didn't get to take my dream from me. 
Honestly, this performance from Stephen James looks better than his performance in Race. Mm. And the story looks more interesting, which is odd, which is very odd. Um, basically, he's playing, a, he's a, a prodigy hockey player that, yeah. that's an up and comer, but he also lives in a racially divided community, community in yeah. Nova Scotia. And uh, it looks really interesting. The trailer actually looks decently compelling, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. And anything, to, any, there, it's rare that you see really good films about hockey. Yeah. Um, Goon. Goon, Goon was Goon very was great, good, yeah. yeah. Um, but that one looks, you know, I like the the politics. That to, to know that that sort of thing happens in Canada, you know, yeah. around the game of hockey, that's supposed to unite all of us. Um, there is still racial tension in certain pockets, well, probably in a lot of pockets across Canada. Yeah, but exactly. uh, to have a, a really good hockey player who happens to be black, and I know we compare it to you know PK Subban. Yeah, because it, but I mean, what someone had, would have to go through in that community. You know, not only only being black, but being you know a really good hockey player. Yeah. Probably not only just racial tension, but a lot of jealousy involved as well. And to have to survive that and get through that, and at the same time, you know, like you said, be the guy on the Wheaties box. You know, yeah. play the play the game, as you would say, be pro. Yeah. Um, it's probably very tough to do. Exactly. Yeah, so I think that's what's that looks what's that's what looks interesting to me as far as the story goes. Definitely. Do you want to hear the story about Director X? Okay, well, why is this guy called Director X? He's 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 a music video director. He was oh, trained. Of course he is. Yeah, he was, but he he's the protege of a man named Hype Williams. You ever heard that name before? <laughs> no, the names just keep getting better though. Uh, Hype Williams has directed videos for uh, Notorious B.I.G. All right. Um, um, okay. Like you name your, you name him in in, uh, in the rap community, and he's probably done a music video for them. The last thing that I remember him doing is he did the music video for Jack White's Freedom at 21. Oh, okay. Which is a great music video. Mm -hmm. But uh, Director X is his Canadian protege, and this is his debut. So I'm kind of interested to see what kind of style he's going to bring to it. That's yeah. always interesting. Yeah, I really want to see this. Yeah, now, definitely. I'm just curious, though, is it playing at any local Holy theaters crap. here in Vancouver? Uh, this is playing at, in, uh, in Surrey. This is also playing at the New West Landmark Cinema. This is playing in North Van at the Esplanade. Okay. Theater, so you have uh, multiple different places you can see. So this even one. like other, if you're watching this and you live somewhere else in Canada, not Vancouver, you probably have to dig really deep to find this one. Yeah. I'm thinking this sort of thing is going to do well on VOD or yeah. on CBC. Yeah, exactly, and it it actually looks like a decent film. Yep. All right, so we're done new releases. So now it's time for our Netflix and VOD recommendations. <laughs> All right, so. I'm cheating a little bit this week, Big and time. yeah, I mean, to the ire of you, you're probably really annoyed by this whole I'm fact. Disappointed in I, you. Don't be disappointed because this is totally a cinephile thing. I get this it. It's totally a massive cinephile thing. Do your thing. The movie I'm bringing is 30 years old this year, so it's getting a screening at the lovely Rio Theater. Uh, I'm just mm. not going to tell you what it is. I'm just going to show you what it is. Check it oh, out. Okay. 30 years. Uh oh. Oh, Isabella Rossellini. Mm hmm. A young Kyle McLaughlin. Do you know what movie this is yet? Audience? No. Get out of there! Get People out! right now are yelling, Blue Put Velvet! Your it's your Blue Velvet! Do it! <laughs> Get on your knees! Do it! You might not be able to find what this on iTunes. Well, we probably would. Who are you? you pro yeah, well, a lot of people have this on VHS at home right yes, now. Yes, exactly. And there is a 30 year anniversary edition now. Yeah. So, Give me your wallet. Give this me your is wallet. such a solid film, though. I just love David Lynch, as people Jeffrey that listen Beaumont. to this podcast probably already know. What are you doing know. in my apartment, Jeffrey Beaumont? I wanted to see you. Are you kidding? Who sent you here? Nobody. I've seen you before. I sprayed your apartment. I took your key. I didn't mean to do anything except see you. What did you see? Tonight, tell me. I saw you come in. I saw you talk on the phone. And then? You got undressed. Do you sneak in girls' apartment to see them get undressed? No, never before this. Get undressed. I want to see you. Look, I'm sorry. Just let me leave. Just do it. No way! I want to see you get undressed. Get undressed. 
She's a frantic woman. I don't care. Yeah. I would get undressed for her. Right? She's a frantic woman holding a knife to his face, though. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, just do what the woman says. Seriously. Come on, Jeff. Jeffy. Of course, he's ripped. Yeah. 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 This is just after Dune, I think. It's never realistic. No. No, not really. But this is uh, David Lynch's Blue Velvet, which is a total movie about innocence lost. It just has so many amazing actors in it. Uh, Kyle MacLachlan's fantastic, near the, kind of near the, the first uh, few years of his career. Isabella Rossellini, uh, Dennis Hopper playing one of the That's greatest right. villains of all time in this movie, huffing on that, that, ga that mask the whole time. The Pabst Blue Ribbon, you got Dean Stockwell in this movie. I love this movie immensely. I think it's such a fantastic film. And to go to the Rio Theater, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous theater, one screen theater, it's amazing to see this at a, at a, a screening, why not? Yeah, if you could find the DVD, I guess, or the Blu-ray, yeah. like you yeah. said, there's a 30th uh, anniversary Blu-ray, yeah. 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 Um, should be cool. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, go see Blue Velvet or get it uh, in a, a store or get it on iTunes. Could why be not? a stoner flick. It could be. Mm -hmm. it really Technically could, be. could probably be yeah. a stoner flick. It could flick. pass. What yeah. do you got this week? I think it might be something obvious. Oh, wow. There's this new movie kit that came out uh, mm -hmm. on Blu-ray. Uh, DVD, whatever you want to call it, yeah. iTunes, VHS. VOD, not on VHS, oh, laser although disc. I have a feeling one day VHS will come back again. <laughs> yeah. Like eight tracks will come back. Like records and yeah. all that. Oh, of course. A uh, little film called Star Wars The Force Awakens. Oh yeah, a little indie film. little indie film, yeah. did a little bit of money. J.J. Mm -hmm. uh, Abrams directed it. Um, you've got, you know, Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Boyega Oscar Isaac, Harrison Ford, Adam Driver, uh, Carrie Fisher, the list goes on and on and on. They even had, you know, cameos galore. Um, it was just a, when I saw it last summer, I was absolutely- Summer? Last <laughs> summer, or last Christmas. <laughs> it feels that long ago, it does. I'm out of I, it. I feel you, I yeah. feel you. But last Christmas when I saw it, mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I was really blown away by how it took me back to the original sort of, that had that same aura about it. It wasn't like the prequels. It took us back to the original, you know, Star Wars, A New Hope, and, and Empire Strikes Back, and The Return of Jedi, that sort of very gritty, very, you know, it, it, it was familiar, is what I want to say. And so yeah. I really enjoyed it. Uh, we got a clip, obviously. You do know I picked this clip because it's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Yeah, is it? Yeah. I have a lot of favorite Tony scenes. I love the banter. We'll get in that way. What was your job when you were based here? Sanitation. Sanitation? Sanitation? <laughs> then how do you know how to disable the shields? I don't. I'm just here to get Ray. People are counting on us. The galaxy is counting on us. Solo, we'll figure it out. We'll use the Force. That's not how the Force works. <laughs> oh, really, you're cold? <laughs> <Come on. laughs> Oh, really? You're cold? Uh, I love it. Great. I love it. Uh, Harrison Ford was really good. He's in that film. The, my favorite part, hands down, of the film. Yeah. Uh, I also like Daisy Ridley quite a bit. Yeah, Ray. Um, so basically, essentially, she's a scavenger and uh, she finds this BB 8 droid that knows where Luke Skywalker is. And mm. so she's off to find Luke Skywalker. And it's and eventually, you know, she goes on an uh, uh, adventure to try to, you know, at the same time save the galaxy yeah. from the evil. Empire, Kylo Ren. Which yes, Adam the, first, the First Order. Yeah, the First Order, yes, thank you. Yes. Kylo Ren, um, Adam Driver, who was, uh, I thought was really good in this film. Yeah, Some people didn't really like him, but I, I thought he was really good. He, there's a complexity to him that I really dig. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, w a lot of people are complaining that this film was too much like A New Hope. Um, yeah, I guess obviously there was some, some well, there was quite a few similarities. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a problem with that because you're retelling a different story with a different character. Yeah. And it's sort of like an ode to those films. Um, but at the same time, they did take it in a different direction. They left you really wanting to know more. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of open-ended questions. Well, Orson Welles on a cliff. You gotta be interested in that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, I, of course, you know, you can buy the DVD and the Blu-rays. Uh, it comes in a three-pack, I guess. You have a DVD and a Blu-ray and, and uh, uh, special features. Yeah. And you can get it in a hard tin uh, case for about $32, I believe, at Best Buy. Or you can just buy the regular. Yeah. 
cardboard case for 25 bucks or whatever it is so hell yeah but i want that documentary 70 minute documentary. 70 minute documentary on it which mm -hmm. is kind of behind the scenes and how they you know made the film and they don't get into the whole uh han solo breaking his or which Harrison, is a Harrison fail Ford breaking his leg i should say yeah that's a fail i think that's a bit of a fail that's because a that was a, a major dramatic part of filming yeah because they were like oh crap how long is he going to be out for yeah exactly. uh, if you don't know uh harrison ford uh did he break his leg? I think so. Yeah, yeah in the a door in a Millennium Falcon or something closed on it. Yeah. And J.J. Uh, Abrams actually had to run to help him get out and actually ended up hurting his back trying to open the door to get Harrison's leg out. I mean, that's probably a very intense moment on the scene, but... Uh, that's ah. crazy. Han it's, Solo uh, got hurt at home. Yeah. How? Yeah. On the Millennium Falcon, where he's supposed to be safe except from lasers outside. Like, yeah. seriously. So anyway, it's available on <laughs> VOD. <laughs> you can watch it at home. Okay, uh, I've already I've seen it three times in theaters, <laughs> so I'm I'll watch it again. Yeah, I saw it on I'll IMAX, which was uh, like fantastic. Yeah, no doubt. enjoyed it, and you know I know some people didn't like the film, but yeah. fuck you. <laughs> Fair. It's good to be diplomatic about it all if yeah. you didn't like it. All right, let's say some news beats here. All right, let's do some news. Ooh. <laughs> Wage world, Wage world. <laughs> <laughs> we need that logo. News, to... news. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Zack Snyder wants Ben Affleck to direct the Batman solo movie. Well, fucking better, because Zack Snyder better not direct it. No, I, I, I'm okay with Ben Affleck directing. Yeah. He's not a bad director. No, no, I'm not a huge fan of Argo, but I love The Town, and I love Gone Baby Gone. Those are both really great movies, in my opinion. He's got one still in the pipe that's coming. Which will probably good. I think it's called Live by Night. Uh, I think it's in the post production phase right now. Um, and then he's heading into Justice League working for Zack Schneider again. Ugh. Fuck this guy. This guy needs to go away <laughs> because he's a whiny little brat. So I, I'm totally done with that. But I'm okay with Ben Affleck also being Batman. I, yeah. I, I just for the record, I never had a problem Me with neither. Ben Affleck Me neither. as Batman. I thought yeah. he looked cool. Did yeah. a good job. Exactly. But no. Uh, Zootopia. It yes. has now crossed 800 million uh, globally and is the top 2016 grocer right now. That's crazy. Yeah. It's funny because uh, Zootopia just kept going, kept making money and money and money. Whereas Batman versus Superman went like this and then like this. 70% drop. Like I think yeah. it's like 68.9, but I'm rounding up. It's 70% that movie drop. And just guess, you know, it just shows you that quality films will continue to make money. And Zootopia essentially made a lot of that. I mean, they had a pretty good, I mean, they. They were showing trailers and stuff for it, but a lot of that film was word of mouth. Mm -hmm. and, and it did uh, really well in China. Yeah. Like really, really, really well. Um, I, I didn't see it when, for the pre-screening of it, but I now have seen it. I saw it last week, mm -hmm. and I loved it. I thought it was so it's great. Fun. It's it, such a great movie. Yeah. Um, it's, still in, it's still number two at the box office right now, so it still has more money to make. So this one could cross billion very quickly it's funny it's gonna it could be one of the highest grossing not just the highest grossing film of the year but it, it could be the highest grossing animated feature of the year yeah now they're still finding dory there's uh, mona that's coming out as well yeah um another disney a sausage uh, party sausage well i don't know if sausage party <laughs> will ever get to the it. i'm just throwing it out there million mark steve but <laughs> um yeah great message to zootopia my, my family enjoyed it and yeah i know a lot of people did so definitely yeah. Uh, and this is kind of a sad note, but it, uh, Trevor did bring uh, Star Wars: The yeah. Force Awakens. Um, Eric Bowersfeld is probably a name that you're very, you're not very familiar with, but the people that are deep into this, into everything Star Wars, know that he is the man behind Admiral, Admiral Akbar. It's a trap, like that mm -hmm. guy. And uh, he passed away at the age of 93. So That's he a long lived, life. He lived a long and full life. Uh, he was an iconic voice of a character that probably wouldn't get recognized on the streets at all. Which is fantastic. But, I mean, if you walked up and he's like, I had like a pack of cigarettes, and it's a trap! And he probably <laughs> might get, he might have got recognized, but... Uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know... I bet he did that. Yeah, he Swap probably... Places. He probably... It's a trap! Yeah, it's a trap! And they're like, oh! <laughs> oh, I know you. You're doing Akbar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're like, we love you, Akbar. You're a Mon Calamari. Anyway, um, <laughs> he had a very long life, and he meant so much to me in my childhood. Admiral Akbar was that guy you always remember. Yeah. The fish dude. Everybody had the little... Uh, his I little did. 
I yeah. did, yeah. I did Figurine have that toy, the Kenner toy. toy. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, so uh, rest in peace to uh, Eric Bowersfeld, because uh, you know you have a place in history for sure. So uh, let's hit up some trailers, and we've got some interesting ones. You're th going to think that we dosed you with some acid if you're watching the video, which we didn't. Yeah. We, we want to tell you we are not doing that anymore. Yeah. Because uh, we too many people died last time. So let's show you Swiss Army Man. This looks crazy. So crazy. And Paul Dano, amazing performance last year in Love and Mercy. What? Hey. hey. Parts are funny, sorry. This movie's a trip. Such a trip. is a trip. I cannot wait. Daniel Radcliffe's dead. I need you to help me get home. Okay, buddy? Okay, buddy. I really like the cadence and the sound of this person here. From starvation. You're special. You're special. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is so amazing. When there's seven billion people on the planet, you might be lucky enough to bump into the one person you want to spend the rest of your life with. This is the life I've forgotten. This is just the beginning. I need this movie in my life. Yo. I need this movie. It looks fuck. It looks so good. Um, at Sundance, it was it was divided. Uh, during screenings, people walked out. People just didn't get what this movie was about. It's mm. about a farting Daniel Radcliffe body that he uses like a Swiss Army knife. It's like Weekend at Bernie's almost. It, yeah, it does, it does, but it has this artful brilliance to it that I just can't get over. Radcliffe just likes taking on those roles. He really he? does, and when I initially heard about this movie, I was expecting a completely different slapsticky trailer, not this like very artful trailer. Like I am. It looks. Yeah. I am so psyched for this movie. Like so psyched. So I, I can't wait. Future stoner flick. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait to get a release date for this one because I'm so excited for this one. Uh, the next trailer, I am not a fan at all of the first movie. So I, I don't know. I'm. We got a different director this time. I'm hoping that we'll get something different out of Alice through the Looking Glass. Hmm. Let's see, yeah, excitable, fantasy, textbook case of female hysteria. I actually yeah, like the first Tim no Burton time. one. I just, I just had issues, it just was gaudy to me, it was just too much. I don't know, I, I feel that Tim Burton can be a good director when he doesn't rely on his same old zooming through stuff tropes. Like, it just bothers me. This one's interesting, and it's James Bobin who did the Muppet movie. Oh, Alan Rickman. What's the matter? The Hatter's the matter. The Hatter is my truest friend. If he's in need, I will help him. It will be a race against time. He is not someone you want as your enemy. Time is a he. Underland. Your time is up. Stuck us all at one minute. Tea time. Tea time. Forever. Hello, Alice. Yeah. Hat is counting on you. This is gonna be huge numbers at oh, the yeah. box office. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Definitely. Disney knows that. Knows that. I mean, it looks like an acid trip. Big time. Yeah. And there's probably going to be many people who are going to be doing acid to this film. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'll be the resurgence of LSD. Timothy, Le Timothy Leary would be proud. Sasha Baron Cohen is a villain. Yeah. Um, a lot of returning people. Hold on, everyone. I got hold on.
there's a cat. Again. This is uh, so dark. Uh, it's so dark, right? It is. It looks I, great. It does. It looks interesting. It, it, it's enough to give me pause to want to take another chance mm -hmm. with these movies. I Like I said when we were watching the trailer, I yeah. really like the first Tim Burton um, film, Alice in Wonderland. And uh, my kids loved it. We watch it. We have it at home. We watch it quite a bit. Uh, I didn't have a problem with it like you did. It's yeah, a good family yeah. kids film. This looks even darker and yeah. a little bit more strange. And um, I'm assuming it's based on another book. Well, yeah, it's based yeah. on Alice Through the Looking Glass, which yeah. I mean, like the first, like Alice in Wonderland, written by Lewis Carroll. Right. So Lewis, there was, was there a series yes, of them? Yeah, yes. Okay. Lewis Carroll is a known was a was a known opium smoker. Yes. So. That's your Very? clue there. That's your clue. So that he was in, high as fuck. Go in freshly pressed. Yeah, for definitely that one. go in for yeah, I definitely feel that one. So now let's do some psychological thriller stuff. And this film looks like it's just gonna be a slow burn until just a, a frenetic crescendo. And I am yeah. really looking forward to this one. It's called The Invitation. Take a look here. Oh, this thing is so official. Maybe they're overcompensating. I love kind of thrillers like this. Out out of the blue. Yeah, it's a horror thriller. Yeah. 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 But the horror is very human. Mm. That's what so it looks like here. to me. We've got a lot to talk about. So much to celebrate um, tonight. This guy, Michael Houseman, he's he was on a show called Treme that I really liked on HBO. And now he's in Game of Thrones. He's Dario on Game of Thrones. Oh, okay. people you yeah. love. And Logan Marshall Green is a, a, Everybody, a, an actor I've dug for Troy. a while. John Carroll Lynch. Far as on windows and no. Security. Safer. You've been acting so suspicious of our hospitality. Well. Jesus. Has he been like this a lot? So agitated? How has he been handling things? He can be self-destructive. I think he's doing the best he can. Something doesn't feel safe here. We don't see you for two years, and then all of a sudden, we get invited to this lavish dinner. Don't tell me that this is normal. What do you think is happening, Will? This beautiful moment is upon us. Tonight is the night our faith is made real. Now this trailer is so well put together. Oh, it is. It's, yeah, it's so hypnotic. There's yeah. nothing to be afraid of. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, so just people who, I don't know if you've read up about it at all, but just uh, the basic premise of the film is uh, this guy and this, this woman, they break up. And after two years, she has a new man in her life. And they invite her ex two years later for dinner, just out of the blue. Yeah. And he shows up and then there's some suspicion, as you can tell by the trailer, but what their real intentions were. Uh, mm -hmm. at this dinner party and so yeah it looks really intense i love those types of thrillers i have this slow yeah. burn you don't know what's gonna happen yeah i can't wait to get the email that there's a press screening for the invitation because i'll just yeah. be like yes because yeah. it just has such a sinister quality to it yeah. that there's something underneath the surface that you don't know what it is and the line there when he's like, you seem so suspicious of her hospitality. And I just, I love shit like this. I yeah. love slow burn stuff like this. So the invitation has me fucking hooked And for that's sure. the power of a really good trailer too, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for one of our favorite parts of the program, our stoner picks. Thank you. <laughs> At us lighting cannabis in cannabis in Canada on our podcast because people were wondering why we don't smoke cannabis on our show. So I figured we, we just wait till the end when we do stoner picks that we will mm -hmm. light our joints. So I won't stare into the camera too longingly. 
As I would if I was just Long fucking and longingly. Longingly. <laughs> so again, I'm gonna piss Trevor off with this one. Yeah, you're breaking the rules. We have these little internal rules. I know. He I doesn't know. really know them. I just have them. I just don't tell tell you. The audience doesn't them. know these rules though. Mm -hmm. So the, this is this is your rules apparently. Um, but I probably should have switched Blue Velvet with this one Doesn't because matter. this one is available on Netflix and it's a television show, which is why Trevor has a problem with it. Um, but this show is based around weed, essentially, a lot of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a show that aired for eight seasons on Fox, which is crazy that they'd have, that, that they'd have like, weed shows on Fox. It's a sitcom with a laugh track, which is shitty these days. I find it hilarious, me and my wife dab, and then watch the hell out of this show. Yep. It is that 70s show. Take a look right here. 70s show. Nice. When you think of God, you see Jesus. No, man, it's Clapton. <laughs> oh my God, man. I drew Clapton too. <laughs> okay, cool. Lori? I drew a special picture just for you. Look at it later when you're alone. <laughs> I got a pair of tennis. Or as we say in religious rummy, a pair of apostles. Ooh, um, I have, I have a jack, a queen, and a king. You mean a Joseph, a Mary, and a Jesus. <laughs> like oh, well, Kevin McDonald is Pastor Dave is so funny. Let's see what Lori's got. He tries to be Red's best friend. Six. Makes you laugh. Six. <laughs> Six. <laughs> well, thank you all for the lovely evening. I'll see you at the church. So, as I was saying, uh, right during that clip, uh, Pastor Dave, Kevin McDonald, Kids in the Hall, shows up. Quite yeah. a bit. He's a recurring character. I, I do want to say something very dark about the sister Lori, uh, played by Lisa Robin Kelly. Uh, she left the show for a little bit because she had a crystal meth problem. Um, she went to rehab. She came back in season five. She left for a season and a half. She came back in season five. Then I believe they fired her again because she went back on drugs. And she actually wow. died two years ago. Oh shit. Yeah, it's That's fucked up, right? It's not happy at all. I said like it was dark. Oh, okay. But everybody in this cast excels. Everyone's so good. Uh, Topher Grace is fantastic. This is the first time I ever saw it. Ashton, uh, most of these Ashton people. Kushner. Ashton Kutcher is in it is really good. Uh, Danny Masterson, who I'd seen in Face Off before, he's the boyfriend that gets stabbed in the leg with the uh, mm -hmm. with the the switchblade. Um, he's really good. Everybody's incredible in this and Red Foreman is basically my father-in-law and it makes me laugh in just all the time. All eight seasons are on Netflix. You can binge that. You can binge through it, smoke a bunch of joints, and just fucking laugh. It's so yeah. great. It, yeah, it still stands the test of time. Definitely. Yeah, For me it does. Absolutely. So, my stoner pick this week is uh, an animated film. You can find it. I believe you can find it on Netflix or on VOD for sure. Um, it's called Animatrix, and uh, it was made in two thousand and three. And uh, by the Wachowskis, I guess, do we call them Wachowski sisters now? We just call them the Wachowskis now. Wachowskis, just, Wachowskis. you know, the sisters, okay, just the Wachowskis. All right. So, well, they're, they used to be dudes, and mm -hmm. now they're women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. But Animatrix, yeah. it was written by them. But mm -hmm. what they did was they got a bunch of uh, some of the really, really good artists throughout Japan. Yeah. And they did nine shorts essentially giving the history of what happened, how the machines took over and, yeah. and everything leading up to the first Matrix film. Yes. And uh, I thought it was really well done. And I really wish they had made the Matrix film, the first one, and then did Animatrix yeah. right after and yeah. didn't do the sequels. Yeah, exactly. So I picked that as a stoner, my stoner flick because, uh, I don't know, I like a good anime film after. A, I actually after pulled a, a clip for it too. Mm. Thank you. your thoughts you like this one i do i really do um my favorite stuff um kind of explain about after the clip but uh mm. some of the animators they got to do this one oh, I really this like, yeah it's very well put together 
but you can see how dated it is now. Yeah. You can you can feel it. Because this At looks like a... At least in this one, you can. Yeah, this one looks like a PS3 cutscene. Yeah. But some of the other styles and animation look really good. I like the, the one about the little robot. Yes. Yeah. Does it look like Michael J. White? A little bit? I like the disrobing cutting stuff. I think that's really funny. Imagine like undressing a woman like that. Imagine. Oh, you do it already? Yeah. I, I didn't want to. I, I didn't want to brag. I didn't want to brag. No, no. I, got I, you know, at home. Yeah. And so I'm sorry. To, like, get into. You guys probably reenact this scene all the time. We do. Every we night. do. This is yeah. This is on a loop. Yeah. You're right though. The animation for this one anyway. It's dated now, right? Yeah. It's definitely dated. Uh, but it, it's still, the impact still is still there. Good. Yeah, the impact is still there. It's still sexy. Because mm -hmm. this is a, a definitely a sexy tale. It's a long scene. It is, it is, yeah. Uh, there is limited clips out there really? for it right limited now. Clips. Yeah. So we it, picked the longest <laughs> clip. <laughs> no, no, this is the shortest. Oh. This is the shortest. It might actually show the whole thing. I really hope. I was really like, there we go. Yeah, there we yeah. Go. There we That's go. That's the buddy shot. And look, he takes a look. He's like, hey. Yeah, well, who wouldn't? <laughs> I know kung fu. Well, I have a girl in her he's underwear. Got, he's got bulging, Show me. And he's got bulging muscles. Yeah. You know? Oh. Just stay at that end. Yeah. Right? Oh, God. Good. This was a good clip. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. This was a good clip you picked. You're welcome. I knew you'd dig it. Yeah, well, look at that. She's yeah, no, he now. wants. She wants uh, to look. Good. You know yeah. it. There's some serious sexual tension here. Yeah. So why are they trying to hit each other with swords? Well, that's that's how you court in the Matrix. This is how you do it. Man. Yeah. This is how you. This is how you get together. It's the loving. She's gonna kick his ass. See, this tension's coming to a crescendo here. Yeah, we just can't handle it anymore. And it's over. Damn it. Yeah, back to the... Yeah. It's over. It's over just like that. I, I'm, the thing that I really like about this is what I was going to say, uh, is one of them is done by uh, a uh, animator named Peter Chung. Right. Um, yeah. Who made Aeon Flux, I believe. It was, That's right. It was yeah. Aeon Flux he made. But he also would go on, he would do, I think it was after this, he would do the uh, Pitch Black Dark Fury uh, animated feature uh, that accompanied the Pitch Black series. Yeah. Uh, one of the first, one of the standalone Reddick stuff, and then he would also do uh, oversee and also animate some segments on the Batman Gotham Knight, yeah, uh, uh, Warner animated. Yeah. So I definitely dig a lot of their works. Of course, it aged a bit over time. I mean, you got to think the Matrix came out in 1999. This came out uh, in 2003. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, it is a bit dated now, and everything's just like ramping up. Just it's everything just goes very very sophisticated in the years that follow. So yeah, yeah. it's bound to happen. But it's still a good watch. Definitely. I enjoyed it. I agree, yeah. I agree. So those are stoner picks this week and that's actually our show this week. That was episode 23 of Flix Anonymous. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at The Steeple Dead. I'm at Trev Duick. And of course, we are on CannabisInCanada.ca. We love them for it. Yeah, this is so much fun being Definitely. here. I have to admit, major thanks to Cannabis in Canada. Yes. Doing good work. Definitely. Um, and uh, we're on the League of Manchildren.com. We're on VanCityBuzz.com. And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching our episode this week. Next week, we have six films opening, uh, including another Disney classic getting a live action redo. Uh, we have Ice Cube resurrecting a franchise that nobody fucking wants. Um, uh, limited release, we have another musician biopic. Are we going to get it right this time? Pfft, I don't know. And two, can uh, sorry, two Canadian features. <laughs> this is why. Yeah. This is why. Okay, two Canadian features that both played at VIF. One is a mockumentary and the other one is a, docu is a documentary. So... We'll see what what's good. I don't know. This week was so fantastic for us. We got three <laughs> films that are just amazing, and yeah. I love them. But either way, either way, eh. otherwise, we will see you. <laughs> damn you! We'll see you next week on Flix Anonymous. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>
Yeah. Hey, you crazy cinephiles. Thanks for listening to Flicks Anonymous. We can be heard weekly on fancitybuzz.com and leagueofmanchildren.com. Feel free to send us nasty and abusive social media messages on Twitter at Flicks Anon. If you need more characters to tell us how much we suck, you can find Flicks Anonymous on Facebook. Until next week, may your weenie stinky and your scotch be hoppy.